Hey, how's it going? We are in the Gospel of John, chapter 12. Uh, we'll be reading verses 20 through 36. Gospel of John, chapter 12, 20 through 36. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the feast. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip in turn told Jesus. Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. The man who loves his life will lose it, while the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. Now my heart is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, This voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. But I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. The crowd spoke up. We have heard from the law. Uh, I'm sorry. The crowd spoke up. We have heard from the law that the Christ will remain forever. So how can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Then Jesus told them, You are going to have the light just a little while longer. Walk while you have the light before darkness overtakes you. The man who walks in the dark does not know where he is going. Put your trust in the light while you have it, so that you may become sons of light. When he had finished speaking, Jesus left and hid himself from them. So, not exactly straightforward answers there, but uh, there's a ton of stuff in this passage. I just want to focus on a little bit of it. It's interesting, and I don't understand why some Greeks came and wanted to talk to Jesus, and then... It says, Jesus replied, you know, the hour has come. Why some Greeks wanting to talk to Jesus uh, makes it obvious that the hour has come? I have no idea. I I don't know what's going on with that. But some powerful things are said in this paragraph, verses 23 through 26, and it's something that's worth uh, reiterating because I think it's it's an important thing. It's a concept that Jesus uh, is recorded as uh, talking about six times in the Gospels. That, that means it's in all four of them and it's in two of them twice. Uh, very important concept. So let's read those verses again. Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. The man who loves his life will lose it, while the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. So that verse 25, the man who loves his life will lose it, while the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life is that thing that Jesus says in different ways, recorded six different times in the Gospels. So here, of course, Jesus is talking about his own death, um, but he's also talking about his expectations of his servants. You know, he's talking about how he's going to die, his moment has come, um, God, you know, honors him through this thunderous voice, and, uh, you know, obviously we're going into... Uh, the the crucifixion and the resurrection here uh, in less than a week. You know, so these things are very important things. Um, But Jesus is also talking about His servants giving their lives for Him. So Jesus gave His life for us that we could be redeemed, that we could be given everlasting life. 
but we give our lives to Christ, not in not necessarily in sacrifice to death. Um, that may happen. It's it's fairly rare, uh, especially in the United States. You know, you're pretty safe being a Christian. You know, it's kind of a protected uh, country. You can have different religious beliefs, political beliefs. We're very safe here, so don't uh, don't get too hung up on conspiracies and stuff. But people do die for their faith. But I think what Jesus is talking about here is living for Him. Christ died for us that we could live for Him. Not, uh, you know, and it, so that's just really the main point. Christ died for us. We live for Him. When we live for Him and die to self in that way, then we see so many benefits here. You know, Jesus says if uh, the kernel of wheat falls and dies, then it produces many seeds. So you have multiplication of effectiveness. You can see a lot get done when you, you know, are crucified with Christ. Then there's eternal life. Of course, that's a huge deal. You know, Jesus says here that, you know, if, if you says the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. You know, hate, it doesn't mean that you just, oh, everything's terrible. You know, what this means is that you're, you're uh, rejecting your own personal interests for the interests of God. Now, fortunately for us, the interests of God are for us to have abundant life. So that's super helpful. Um, but eternal life is the benefit. And then there's being with Jesus. You know, where I am, my servant also will be. So we have, when we give up our life in that way and live for Christ, we're, we're with Jesus. And then there's honor. My Father will honor the one who serves me. So what an incredible pile of blessings here. Multiplication of effectiveness, eternal life, being able to be with Jesus and honor from God. That's just amazing. You know, can you lose on that deal? Living your life to serve Christ and you get all of those things? That's fantastic. Now, Jesus was troubled. You know, we, we read he was troubled with the difficulty he was going to face, but he understood it was worth it. So he counted the cost and he's like, yep, this is good. I'm not going to run from this hour. He's going to go. Um, and then I want us to do the same thing to count the costs of living our lives for ourselves versus living our lives for Christ. Which is going to be the better life and which is going to result in better things? Well, living your life for Christ is better, I believe, in the short term. There, you know, Again, there can be martyrdom situations and persecution and things like that. But especially in our culture, people aren't persecuted for being Christians. They're persecuted for being uh, difficult people to deal with. Um, and that's a very different reality. So we're not persecuted for being Christians in this culture. That can happen. But in our culture, you can live in the abundant life of Christ now, totally sold out to the Lord, and, you know, multiplying your efforts, seeing, you know, everlasting life in your future, grabbing hold of uh, a life lived with Christ, and then honor from God. What an, how, anyway, to me, this is just not even a contest. Uh, living a selfish life versus living for Christ. The life lived for Christ is way better. So let's pray to understand that and to truly devote our lives to service to Jesus. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, help us to understand the value of serving you and serving Christ. What an amazing opportunity we have, not just to wander through this life, but to be servants of the Most High God. What an incredible blessing that is. It brings multiplied effectiveness. It brings everlasting life. It brings honor and being able to be with you, Lord. What an amazing blessing that is. Help us to see and be motivated and excited and full of faith and joy knowing that we get to be the ones who walk with you. What an amazing blessing that is. So Father, fill us with faith. Help us to go all in. 
knowing that it is the best choice we can do for ourselves and it allows us to be part of your kingdom and receive all these blessings. So, Father, encourage us with this. In Jesus' name, amen.